So 1FX, um, 1FX came about, I'm going to do all the little history, because once I tell you what we do, it's so simple. Um, but it came about um, about seven years ago. I was living in Argentina. And I was like, no, there's this thing called inflation. I've never experienced this thing in my life. You know, but in Argentina, it's real, like 20%, etc. And people are literally going across the border, you know, it's cash in the thing trying to get their money out of the country. And so I, you know, I went to Uruguay myself and they wouldn't open me a bank account because they you know, needed documentation. I wasn't a cocaine dealer. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I was really interested in this whole idea of inflation, capital controls and things. And um, my uncle actually told me a great story, which I'll repeat. So during the Pinochet era of Chile, they were trying to get money out of Chile, and they couldn't do it because they were capital controls. So they went down there, and they found the best racehorse in Chile. They bought that guy, shipped him up here to Cali, sold the racehorse, and that's how they got the money out of the country. So anyways, as this was all happening in 2010, and these thoughts were in my mind, you know, Bitcoin came out. And so my original idea was I wanted to start a Bitcoin ETF. And so I own BitcoinETF.com. And even the Winkle bosses have failed, so I clearly didn't succeed in that venture. And then, you know, I, the next thing was like, well, let's start a wallet, you know. And then, of course, Coinbase and so didn't miss that boat, too. And I also, um, you know, Charlie Shrimp got jailed, or, mm -hmm. you know, that happened. There was a lot of regulatory uncertainty about what's going on with Bitcoin in, you know, 13, 14, you know, those years. And, so the original idea, though, was, and where the name OneFX comes from, is I wanted to create a wallet that allows people to hold currencies like stocks. It's because I really believe that the future of consumer banking is multi-currency, allowing people the choice, the freedom to diversify the currencies. And more and more today, you see that happen and coming out with different products. So um, I didn't get it done, but you can see it happening today. And so the name OneFX comes from this idea of one account, all currencies, so one FX. That's where the name of the company comes from. Um, but so along this journey of mine, I did actually build an app to convert currencies, to send international money transfers. And then I found out, oh man, you need a license to actually go live with this. Oh, MTL, my friend. Yeah, like what's going on here? I thought I was being an entrepreneur. But no. So for all the budding entrepreneurs out there, you know. Don't start, it's a bad idea. You know, but, you know, go for it, right? But you'll run into this thing, which is called regulation, licenses, and you're gonna find out that, you know, it's a sizable check, you know, time, et cetera, et cetera. So that put the kibosh on this currency trading and international transfer app that I built, you know, two years ago. But through Fortune and the rest of it, I hooked up with uh, some of my new partners, got into the banking world, which is very ironic because if my journey started with Bitcoin and I thought I was going to be in a pick on the banks and the rest of it, and now here I am a partner with a bank. And I'm here to tell you about ACH payments. Okay. Right? <laughs> I like it. So, so, what 1FX is today is we are a mobile payments invoicing platform. We're FDIC insured. And I don't think anybody's done a study on this. We haven't anyways. So I'll just say it for arguments purposes. Uh, we may be the cheapest and fastest invoicing and payments platform on the market. Um, we have a flat fee of 10 cents. That's 10 cents for a payment. That's 10 cents for accepting a payment on an invoice. Um, I was in Wells Fargo the other day. Their business account costs $14 a month. You can send up to $5,000 to someone during the day or $25,000 total. With 1FX, it's free, 
$70,000 is the daily match out of the box for a business account. There is no limits for sending to individuals. Uh, you know, Venmo, you can send three grand a week or $10,000 a day. Um, our payment speed is one to two days. Um, unlimited built-in invoicing. Um, we're probably the only app on the market that has true mobile invoicing, meaning you can both send and receive and pay an invoice through, all through a mobile app. Uh, PayPal doesn't have that. The rest of them don't have that. Um, you can create groups, invoice or pay up to 25 people, all from your mobile app. You can upload an Excel sheet and pay 1,000 people, all from your mobile app. And this is also online as well. You can do mass invoice, mass payments. And um, that's really it for, you know, for mobile payments and invoicing platform to move money around. And the other unique feature, which is also, we're sort of sleeping on this at the moment, but you know, we're building it up, is we basically got a built-in platform. All the wallets are connected, and everybody who signs up, their profile is also a store. So you're invoicing, you're creating items for your invoicing, but you're also creating your storefront at the same time. So when you're using one of X, you literally can open it up, search for lawn mowing, and find a guy who offers lawn mowing services near you, go to his profile, and pay him directly instantly or next day to his bank. Cost is 10 cents, okay? All the people on Etsy who are losing 8.5%, they need to come to one of us. All the people giving 3% away on PayPal, they need to start invoicing with one of us, okay? We think we have a market for everyone with a bank account in the United States should have a one of us account because we're a complement to your existing bank account. And in the future, we'll add card, we'll add international payment capabilities, and you know, we want to turn this into a global payments firm. So thank you all for coming. That's one effects available in the And any questions or anything from anyone? Yeah. Um, so uh, how do you actually compete against like what's out there now? And if I load money into your wallet, because it sounds like it's a Bitcoin wallet, but it's for regular currency. Except that you're you're using you're transferring it to regular currency. We're, yeah, we're just yeah, no big one. No big one. So only SCP on yeah, currency. Yep. So how do I open up an account? You just you have to get verified. SS we go through a whole it's open you're opening up a bank account. So it, it, it is a bank account. Yep. So what is the um the plan beyond US? Because what about people in China? Can they use your platform to pay for services outside of China? No, at the present moment they can. But the, the vision is that we're starting here in the United States, and like we're a great platform for businesses. You know, big, a business can do 70 grand a day of this stuff. Instant payments back and forth, right? Versus, you know, the banking thing. So, and, and it's a searchable platform. So once we add international, then we see ourselves doing partnerships with banks internationally. Now let's expand this so now we have a global platform for doing business. And then it becomes literally like a yellow pages, but with a built-in banking and payments infrastructure. So it's like, yo, I need a guy in Thailand. I'm just gonna search graphic design in Thailand. He's gonna show up. I'm gonna be able to send him money through the platform. Wait, wait. You know, as soon as possible. <laughs> I work for a company, Neopay, we do regulatory compliance for companies just like yourself. <laughs> so I'm just curious uh, how you got around the, the licensing aspect. Are you you're doing it through contract as the bank? Uh, the bank is the one moving the money and they have, you have an agency relationship or some program service, right? It's exactly right. I, mean, I the, the big pivot was becoming a software company. Okay. Which is your FDIC insured, right? Yes. Yep. The FDIC insured software companies? The accounts are held in, in a bank and you're all oh, it's an FBO account. So are you a network? Because it, it sounds like every sender and receiver needs to have a, a one FX account, right? Yes. So so if there's an institution that's gonna receive uh, a payment, like the, the lawn the, the guy who mows the lawn and you both need to have a one FX bank account. Can you hook up external bank accounts? Oh yeah, I mean, so basically, you send somebody an email, 
exactly like PayPal. They get the email that says claim the funds, they put in their ID, verify, bank. Now, once they're verified, they can link uh, multiple bank accounts. So once you're verified, I can send money uh, directly from 1FX, my account, to your bank. Or if you're verified, I can send it directly from my bank to your 1FX. And you can have multiple accounts on there too. So like for invoicing, for example, you can designate, you know, I want to be paid to this one or that one. You know. It sounds like a non-bank financial institution. Yeah, I think that's maybe I don't know if that's the term, but so how do you see, you know, services like Zelle? Is that gonna be an enabler for you or more of a competitor for you, do you think? Um, you know, I think something like Zelle is um, you know, well, I actually use Zelle, or I use SurePay today because I was trying to use. I, I, I thought this question might come up, and so um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not Zelle. We're really focused on people who are doing business, like the business, the freelancers. That's it. And so going forward, we want to add value-added services to small businesses in particular, um, and that market. So Zelle to us is, um, yeah, it's a competitor, but it's not necessarily in the same space. And we also think, or I do anyways, that um, you know, there's so many payment companies out there. We're all doing basically the same thing, but experience, the user experience is so key. And like when I used the SurePay today, I really was not a fan of the experience. Uh, I know for me, I mean, I love one. I walk down the street, I get things done in a minute. You know, I send money from E-Trade to my 1FX and then I diversify it into my other four bank accounts. It takes me a minute, so fast, so simple. I look people up, I can find them on the email. It's sure paid <coughs> It's like going back to 95. You know? <laughs> With the user, the designer. So mm -hmm. that's how I feel. What's your user base like? Uh, we released uh, 30 days ago and we have uh, 5,100 installs. What's your uh, user adoption strategy? Put out a damn good product. You know? uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, really that's it. Is we want to be cheaper and faster, and we want to offer new services all the time, and you know, that hopefully add value to it. And so, so how do you overcome the, the hurdle of people having to open a bank account to pay someone when that's not normally a hurdle, they just pay with a credit card? Um, well, I mean, these are, if you want to go to and pay at a store, you pay with a credit card, right? But I mean, to pay a bill, if you get an invoice, I mean, you are used to just paying with a credit card, so I'm just... Right, and I mean, you're going to be at home. Oh, right. you know, it's, it's like oh, having to open a PayPal account. Right, right. yeah, I mean, there are certain things you got to do in life. And the way that, what I would say about that is, as a merchant, you know, it doesn't make any sense to send invoices and give away 3% of your revenue. So if I'm a merchant, I'm going to tell you that I would prefer to be paid through one effect. I'll give you an example. I paid Jeff the other day. And I made fun of Jeff about six Bad months idea. ago because I bought a ticket to this event. The ticket to the event was $5. The fee was another $2. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's you know. So I, I, I do have a one effect, and what do you, it, it is very uh, it's fast. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. So do you have any merchants offering incentives? <laughs> Uh, to, to, to sign up and do that way, because obviously over the time it's going to—it's like the Starbucks app. It's—it's it's, it's going to cumulatively reduce the cost of payment processing. Person, you know, so, so they want to get involved and them and get them using it. And have, have stores come up with uh, incentive programs? That... Yeah, you know, there's a friend of mine who he has a patent, and I really shouldn't speak on it because I'm going to mess it up. But it's for a card <laughs> that offers basically incentives to like trade speed. Um and so we were talking about some things, but the quick answer to your question is no. Um, we're too new um, to, but it's a great idea, so thank you. What bank are you partnered with? Uh, Triumph Bank in Memphis. And it all B to C, or is it B to B as well? B to B, B to C, B to B. Mainly B to B though, right? It, it, yeah, it's, yeah. The, the user experience is so simple, it can really be great. So that brings the question about the user adoption thing. Uh, is it, if it's just word of mouth. Oh well, oh, well, oh, well, was it a marketing question? I think so. Yeah. 
Okay, well, yeah, certainly we're present on all the social channels. Um, we have some limited data based on like Google AdWords, for example. Um, I mean, I'm spending nothing on Google AdWords. I'm spending $20 a day, and I've gotten my cost per acquisition down to a dollar. But, you know, I mean, it's, there's no real, but, so all the standard user acquisition channels. Yeah. Basically, I am willing to wait three days because that's part of the processing the anyway. Basically, basically, you, I mean, you, I can answer that several different ways. I could say, well, I chose not to be greedy. Or maybe not, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, but I really do believe that the trend, or at least the, uh, whether it's a real trend or whether it's just in people's minds, the trend, in my opinion, is the cannibalization of the payment fee, or at least it's going to be hidden. You know, they're going to charge you fourteen dollars a month, and then they're going to say it's free. So, but I really think I'm definitely of the philosophy that payments is going to be like email. I'm, I'm the same guy. I'm, I'm like I'm with Circle. I'm with all these guys. And so I really think that the future of payments is building value-added services around the payments. And so that was a decision I made um, to test this quote business model out and um, yeah, build value-added services around the payments. I think that's the future. And that's why the credit card companies are trying to get into other value-added sorts of businesses? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the smart ones are, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a cannibalization, everybody's, and, you know, I mean, it's not free. I mean, it costs money to send that money around. And, I mean, like Circle, they just said they're doing it for free. Well, somebody's paying it for it, and I know who it is. Their initials are G and S, you know. But, so you've got to come up with some other <laughs> Everybody's got, so I think it's, it's just an exciting time to be in payments. And there's so many other different business models that people can go after. I feel like there's definitely a merging of ad tech, for example, with payments. You know all that behavioral data, like you know the banks. There's you know that Carlytics company. Some of you do, anyways, and they work with B of A. And I don't know them that well, but like there's so much potential with that Carlytics offers, and you know other revenue streams. That and I also think that while it might be quote scary to be like, oh well, the payment is now ten cents or the payment is free. Well, really, I mean now you're increasing the velocity of money, right? You got money moving around all the time, and so. I mean, there's going to be more commerce, more opportunities. Um, and so that's just, again, you know, I, I'll be repeating myself very rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like the energy, man. We, we did. Thank you. Do you have any other anticipated revenue streams Yes, absolutely. So the next step of evolution is, and it's still, you know, up in the air a little bit, um, but the next conversation, which is tomorrow, is uh, adding a card maybe international payments, but I definitely really do want to add the card because I feel that that closes the loop. You know, now you've got an FDIC insured account and you can actually go buy a sandwich. I think that's a really key sort of use case. And once we have the card, we'll also be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, help corporations and other people with, you know, like mass payments to debit cards, instant payment to debit cards. You know, so I think that's probably our next step. And that'll be, of course, a, you know, that'll be another uh, revenue generator. The other steps, you know, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say everything, not that we're that secretive, but, um, you know, I think there's invoice financing, for example, we can get into that. Factoring. Uh, factoring, yep. Then the other model is, once we get, you know, a million people on this platform, there's a lawnmower, there's a lawyer, there's this, that, the other guy, now you get into a Google model of people searching and hey, I want to be the number one lawnmower in my area. And I'm going to pay to be that guy. A dollar a click. Uh, so I think that's a model. Um, and then additionally with that, I did, uh, I did speak with a guy who runs a financial product search engine. So again, you know, there's the upsell opportunities in the wallet as well. So with, with the card, how, how do you gain acceptance? I mean, is it going to be Visa or MasterCard branded? How do you get acceptance at that sandwich shop? It would be a MasterCard brand. Okay. It's the pin the card. So you bootstrapped them? <laughs> or um, how, how, how are you managing your growth? 
So at this point, um, yeah, we're totally bootstrap. So I know a lot of these uh, manufacturing small business lending companies. When they do underwriting, it's all to small business credit reports. From Experian, Equifax, or and each one of those credit reports is thirty million dollars. Like you have real transactions, you know, help the business. Like, by the way, I, I think you're just charging too little for the transaction. I, I pay five dollars for it because I'm paying you know, fourteen dollars a month, so it's still true. But I pay thirty five dollars on top of that. For each employee, doesn't matter how many money amount. I think we're going to time in addition to the credit card company, which they charge two point nine percent, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's just across a three thousand dollar work invoice, and I pay eighty dollars for it. There's no not ten cents, obviously. Um, it's the race to zero. Around, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with that because it took four days from the to that money to the bank. You need one FX? So I mean, like literally that's the way we built this, just that so you know, I don't know how many you know, you sign up for one FX, load up an Excel sheet. Well, that's what it. Do you need to become profitable? <laughs> Is this your event? Well, we become profitable no. when we have enough uh, users. So uh, the other guy, Alan? No. Yeah. Well, right now, um, our, we, we run a lean operation. I, I have a coupon on my, on my site. I don't know if you sell a coupon. You can have it's like 20% off. Yeah, I'll probably be there. But, uh, that's a, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit of questionable because, you know, what sometimes people come to us and they want to use our API but they don't really want to play by the same rules that we have to play by. And so that's, it makes it a little bit complicated. Yeah, I was just thinking P will institute. Like, so what if someone API. just actually handled all the, uh, you know, obligation well, user API? Yeah. 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 So, well, I didn't quite hear all, but yeah, the, the answer is it's hard to get out our API, because, okay. yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. But we do want to have an API, on the other hand, for example, that integrates with like, uh, you know, more advanced accounting programs. And I don't want that because I can launder $25 million a year. If I give you my API? Yeah, that's, yeah. So many thousand dollars a day? He's doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> We're friends, it's all right. email for my product. Okay, cool. Any other questions? All right, so what's your uh, Twitter handle? It's at 1FXPay. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. So uh, next, next we have uh, equities.com. All right, guys. Hi there. Enzo Bellani. Um, I'm the CEO. I took over the firm about two and a half years ago. Uh, it, it was born out of a magazine that was uh, that's been around since 1950. It focused on the microcap marketplace. They had the as a URL, the as a management team really couldn't execute. I'm actually from you know I worked at Nasdaq for seven years. I, I, I built one of their largest businesses. It's now about a billion dollars in, in actually top line revenue and about a, about actually 19,000 um, clients, mostly on the actual corporate side. So the reason why, so what I'm, what I'm going to talk about, about now is uh, flat fee online trading. Like everything else, NFC FinTech, at the NASDAQ, we actually saw our actually prices go down to almost zero for actually massive trading volume. We're now seeing the retail market go from $12 per actual, you know, actually trade commission, $4.99, $1.99 to flat fee. So we actually had trading for actually twenty nine ninety five a month, unlimited trading on the actual listed equities in in only the the kind of U.S. market. We plan to have options and equities, unlimited trading for one hundred and nine dollars a month. So this is going back to the same concept that he's actually talking about. It's it's a race to to zero. The fact is is that the old world of actually having a fee, four dollar fee to trade a stock, is ridiculous. 
Now, the reason why we're doing it is a little bit different than maybe other people. We have about 400,000 monthly you know, visitors that are active. They're active types of investors, and they're usually looking at companies that are less than a billion in market cap. These are the next companies. These are the cannabis companies. These are the companies doing, you know, actually, they're actually building mining machines to actually mine actually, you know, actually currency. These are new types of firms. We focus on those companies mostly. And about 90% of our revenue comes from actually corporate issuers, public companies that are micro cap and small cap that are marketing on our site. Because we're actually former NASDAQ folks, we looked at it as this way. If I build this, this flat fee trading app that almost takes it down to actually zero, and eventually we might go free trading, and not the Robin Hood version of free trading where it's this P2P application and the, and the actual trade and the, the actual order takes two days to process. This is tied to people who I used to work with on the street that if I place an order in Tesla, if I place a basic order in a small cap stock that's worth about $400 million market, you know, market cap, the order gets done and cleared that day in probably a couple of minutes. That's why Robinhood is not gonna work. Is, I mean, they have a lot of money, but I think it's, it's a flawed model. The P2P model is a flawed model. It's a dark pool for you guys who understand Wall Street. <laughs> which I think you all probably, you all probably do because you're trying to basically destroy it. So um, <laughs> we, we, we come from the, the actual mindset that if I can give you a flat fee online trading product and you'll trade more through the site, we also let you trade through news, which is like stock twits. So every single news article, we do about 5,000 separate actual news articles per day. So we, we cover that universe of stocks that nobody covers. We get picked up by FC Bloomberg, we get picked up by a bunch of sites. But the concept is, is clear that eventually you'll, you probably won't pay a fee to trade stock. Not when it's a liquid stock. You'll, you'll pay more when it's an illiquid stock. Or when it's a, a crowdfunded Reg A plus stock. And the future for us is that I want you to be able to trade anything on one screen anytime you want, all day long. So if, if, if you want to trade actual listed stock, an unlisted stock, like a actual crowd financing, you know, actual regular plus stock, if you want to trade actually currencies, including actually crypto. So we're, we're, not, we're not actually a registered broker dealer. I'm a FinTech guy, so my, my thing is let's build a portal but let's pull all of the actual broker dealers and the licenses and the, and the regs and all of these guys, let them do it. I'll put it on one screen. Uh, so I can show you a demo, it's pretty simple. You have to register as, you know, without site, and then you have to apply to, to trade. Um, the other thing is that the reason why I'm doing this is really has nothing to do with trading, except that I want data. So I want to be able to know I am from the corporate solution side of the business. I'm from the issuer side. I'm from the targeting of the investor. And what I want to do is turn the Amazon, is it, it, turn selling a stock like selling the Amazon products. If I like this book, I might like this book. If I've been reading about cannabis stocks, but I, I usually buy you know, mining stocks, I'm going to show you a cannabis stock. And I might even show you a, a new opportunity in a cannabis stock that is a special actual kind of PPM where you, you can get a discount on the, the actual traded stock, which is, which is the way most of the small cap markets work. So it's a much, it's a different model. I'm not sure, I don't really fit into, into the, 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 the actual payment world. We're from the actual kind of exchange world, which is a little bit different. And where we see blockchain going is towards solving the problem of the actual paper search, the actual stock transfer issues. It's a lot of the friction that are in the banks now that are just you know, moving around money. We have the same problem in the actual stock trading markets. And for everyone here who's actually raising some actual sort of capital, you need platforms like this because to go to a person and say that this bank is gonna raise your capital, it just doesn't work the same way anymore. So our whole thing is big data. I want to be able to almost become like, I want to know that, you know, Scott, I want to know that Scott is on, 
my site, he's trading this stocks, he, he has these holdings, he's actually buying this stuff, he's watching these videos, and then I would use actually AI to kind of serve him, and it doesn't really have to be complicated, you know, AI, just basic AI, to serve him something that he might be interested in. That's the actual future of stock trading. Not this huge, you know, a bunch of ETFs. I mean, every single person does, does you know, does ETFs. That stuff, to me, is nonsense. And it's just a way for people to make money. So I can show you a demo here if you all want to crowd around. We have questions. Or is you, uh, you're going to have questions. Why, not, why don't you make it free? Why do, why do I have to pay 29 or 100 and so I'll tell you, so because we're just, we're, we're looking at a business model that potentially could make it free. The, the problem is I don't have $120 million, I guess you're wrong, or $173 million. So I'm like, and plus, you know what, my, my, my people don't really, I, I think that they would, they, I've had people move from Robinhood, call me up, and they have like 500 people that follow them, and they're moving their, their actual customers over. Because Robinhood can't actually execute in a, a, a timely manner. Robinhood's bullshit, right? You're competing with people like me that trades on the market. <laughs> That's right. I, I don't want to be, you know, exactly. Okay. Those are my customers. Right, great. So what's the minimum to open an account? No minimum. No minimum. Unlimited what's the, trading. What's the bare minimum subscription for your trade, for me to trade on? It's actually $30 a month. $30 a month. I just got an email from Wells Fargo two hours ago. They lowered all their trading fees from six, seven dollars down to a dollar. Right, so it's a race to a zero. That's right. So if so, again, I don't have to know. So I'll just just tell you like a secret. Okay, the secret is I don't have to make money really off of the only trading. I'm going to make money off of the data selling it to corporate issuers who will target those companies and those investors. So zero is the way to go. I think that the only thing that I might do is have a little bit of like an ad model. Which I have to, so I have the SEC attorneys looking at the ad model. Yeah. What's your uh, user base looks like? We get about, uh, we get about 400,000 monthly visitors. We have about 30% of them are be between the ages of obviously 25 and 36. We have 10% of them are actually kind of accredited investors. We have 10% that are in the financial services marketplace. When we have events, we usually have hedge funds, while the like ultra high net worth, the people that usually invest in small cap stocks are usually people that have a lot of money. They're not really the everyday guy, but we want to educate them. And we have about 80 people that just blog on our platform. And some of them are top people in the industry, like like as you can't trade 10 times a week. Though. 10 times a month. No, I think the to goal for us is that move to your they, they have to trade twice a month, three times I'm, a I'm month. Do twice a month. Maybe once every quarter. So, so <laughs> you're not the actual audience. So we have about. <laughs> so you're not the audience, so please leave. No, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? I mean, look, it, it's, it's, it's something that we're doing as really to just push the envelope. I mean, we actually just. So here's a, a, another separate story, which is I just had three actual kind of cryptocurrency companies come to me and they want to market their ICOs on, on our platform. And I might say to myself, this is an unbelievable movement. This is a huge opportunity. And I'm actually getting paid by one of them because they have a, a um, they have actual cryptocurrency that's traded on two exchanges and it's, 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 uh, it's liquid. Because most of them are not liquid yet, right? And what we do is we give these companies that are micro cap and small cap, we give them a chance to become liquid because we create products that allows them to market to the right investor at the right time that are interested in, in their companies. So think about this. Trade three to five times a year, make it free. So I don't make money on this way anyway because I'm not a, a registered DD. That's the problem. So I have to do the flat fee model. But I would take your money anyway and say, I'll give it to you free for three months. Just as you try it out, yeah, you can see what happens. Every night. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you. Yeah, so you don't restrict order types or you do not sell order No flow. restrictions. You do not sell order flow. No, no, no. So do we are tied to a separate actual BD. Okay. Right? And that BD does sell the order flow. 
Okay. Absolutely, that's the way that they make money. So the other question is, say I'm a, not an issuer, but a market maker that's stuck with a large position in a, a microcap stock, could I advertise on your platform? So microcaps, we do not do microcaps on our platform yet. We do listed microcaps. Okay, so if I was a, had a- It has to be NYC, NASDAQ, or BATS. So if I had a, a listed security that's illiquid and could- You, you could totally trade it on our so, platform. So as a, those market makers, what does she, what does she pick it up? Could, this, no, 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 going no, no. Could, if I was a market maker, could I advertise on your platform to sell this? Uh, this yes. Uh, okay. So you don't uh, you don't restrict uh, market makers from issuers from? No, because you're because we're a marketing. We are a news and content platform. We're like a, as we're seeking alpha, but except that we don't let you block. We won't let anyone post things without putting their name on it. Okay. Like you can't just sign on and post stuff. You have to go through a process. And that's why we don't really care about the traffic number as much. We're more focused on having the quality traffic because we don't want anyone. The problem in the microcap market, and no one knows this, is that it's a pretty messed up marketplace. And I work mostly in the large cap market. And we came in here. I have three people from that. No, sorry, four people from NASDAQ that we all built actually the actual corporate services there. And the reason why we're here is because there's a huge market opportunity, but you have to be very careful because you will find people that will try to take advantage of the platform. But I can show you a demo if you guys want to see. I'm not sure if this was a demo or if you want to just all stay away like this. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> not your key metrics, it sounds like you're focusing okay. on, but how many paid users do you have and what's the average count value? So oh, that's a good question. So we, we've been running this for four weeks and we have about 250 accounts open. Um, we haven't spent, we spent a little bit of money on advertising, like we, we did the Bloomberg thing, and, we'll, and then we cut it down, and really what works is, to be quite honest, is Facebook. I mean, it's, it's just so much more effective. Um, and uh, we think that by the end of the year, like I, I'm also having conversations where groups want to move over, like 500 accounts, 1,000 accounts, you know, so that's the other issue is that we, because we're, we're from the street, what's happening is I have people who I know who are coming to us and saying, you know, I'll move all of my, my 500 accounts and I'm a, a actual RIA and I'm, and I don't really, so we're trying to handle that. Um, the fact is, is flat fee is the way to go, especially for, and, and, well, free is the way to go, but you have to monetize something at some point. Well, you're saying you're monetizing, you're monetizing the data, monetizing right? data. I have to get enough data to, to get a time to invest or see invest. It's three thousand dollars per investor. And then when you invest, maybe. I think you, you know. I think you're, you're right. I just don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but I think you're. No, right. The cost per acquisition is huge. It's twenty five hundred dollars to three thousand dollars per investor, and then when you invest, on average, about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that's like secure real estate shit. Right? So the cost of acquisition is high. If you make a, if you make a free, you can get non accredited, do a couple of reg A's and. So how much are you going to charge me as a market maker that's stuck with a quarter million dollar illiquid position? Huh? So, uh, like, as a market maker, I have a quarter, you know, quarter million shares on my books that is completely illiquid, hasn't traded 500 shares in the last six months. So, I, I so if I, so if, we, so if I put advertising on your platform that wanted to click and every time they bought, would you charge me just like so the way, AdWords? So the way that I would work with someone like you, and we have actually market makers that come to us, so people that have invested in these companies that are not liquid, and they'll come to us and say, higher equities. And they work with us for a year or six months at least. And we have proven we'll, we, we, can, we can actually increase volume. We have case studies between 200% to 2,900%. Because the volumes are not there. And we want to make the company more liquid. We don't, we're not trying to do a, a pump and dump. We actually do it over this long term, which, which is a corporate issue. Uh, but, that's, but that's what I would say. Is there a click for like every time a user buys uh, your ad shares? We, we would have to have it. So we have a whole model. So we, all right, so I've worked with over 6,000 corporate issuers, and mostly mega cap and mid cap. I ran two, two or three companies that we serviced them with proxy, you, you know, IR, wire services. So I know what the model is, and what I've done is I've taken that model and I've made it a compact model for, for, the, for the micro cap that's over one year. You have to do it over a year because most micro caps, if you do it short term and it's not liquid, it's gonna go up and it's gonna go down, and then you're involved in pump and dump. So because we're all former like NASD, NASDAQ people, we said, okay, we'll actually police it. Um, so we, we, don't, we almost act like a, a SRO in some ways.
if you know what that is. But, uh, a question over here from you. What, what's the monetization model for the day? So if I begin, so it's basically a, a targeting money. So I built targeting products on, so most of the large cap companies, they target the, the actual institutions. So there are massive databases that I've built at NASDAQ and FactSet too, we, we used to use theirs, and Thomson Reuters, and it was this institutional database. So I knew that, you know, uh, Rod Rigo was a actual manager at X Hedge Fund, this was his actual kind of portfolio based on the 13F filings. And I, and I knew that if I did a search and I was looking for a value investor, I can target that value investor. That doesn't exist in retail. So what if I told you that I could create a targeting mechanism in retail investors? Because you're a complex person. You don't study the same stock every day. You're not this PM. So you might be interested in this stock at this point or that stock at that point. You may be. It's, it's, it's just the same, con it's the same concept as commerce. If I have that database, and I have that actual targeting mechanism, that's probably worth a billion dollars. Yeah, because it's a massive database, and it's, all a re it's a lot of retail, but you also have actually institutional. We find, I'm not sure how many pe people do this, but we can load a no, we're looking at noble list. You guys know what a noble list is? Probably not, some do. I can find people on Facebook via their noble list, and I can retarget a person who's already a shareholder. There's a lot of opportunity in this space, and it's all about raising capital and kind of changing the game. You don't, you don't really need the investor banker model of picking up the phone and calling the same five people is, is to me, is dead. But, you know, so I'm not sure if anybody has any other questions or comments. Any other questions? I can play stock options and stuff like that. The options will be live uh, at the end of June-ish. Uh, it'll be $109 a month, unlimited options trading. And like in, employee stock options. And oh, the, the ESOP plans, yeah. we, we're not really looking at that yet. That's a whole other hurdle because there's all this, this, this kind of ERISA stuff. And it's a whole other hurdle, all regulation. So. In terms of option trading, how are you different than Option it's $109 a month, options. But that's the price, but in terms of the technology and... It's, it's an options platform just like, like all options platform. I mean, you know, as the actual options trader, unless you, the only thing is that you'll put in, a, you'll have to put in, in the orders, right? Are you better than that? The options house guys, are, it depends on what you use. In, there terms, are, of, in terms of their website flow, because yeah, I, they're, they're, I open depends on what you do. Swab and so there are very active things. traders. There are very active traders that will have, you know, this, this actual whole mess, which will be, it'll set up a bunch of trades. It's basically a back, you know, like a box trading platform. We don't have that. You got to put in the orders, right? But most of our investors and traders are going to be doing option collars, you know, basic option. But you can do a bunch of stuff. And uh, the next step for us is to what you, you know, to either build or partner with a more active platform, where you, you can pay, you know, thirty-five dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month, and you get un, unlimited trading of everything. But it has a lot of those multifaceted features. But as an option trader, the price is not an issue. How the platform works. That's well, that's not true because every single option trader actually prices in the option kind of commission cost into every trade. But it depends on how the platform works. It's a platform work where a lot of money is not, not really an issue. No, it's, it's a call and a put. You know, so most folks do college strategies on the volatility, right? That's the most basic option you know, strategy. So you'll just put in. All, put, and you can buy the stock as a hedge, and you can do it from, from one platform, you can see it all there. If you want to do like multiples trading every day, like thousands of trades, you definitely want to use like an OMS type of system, but then you're really a professional trader, it's a little bit different. You actually did not really answer my question. So my question is, sure. if you compare your platform with Option Express, Swap, and E-Trade, it's all the same thing. It's just a thing. I know. <laughs> it looks for analytics. So you're looking for yeah, charting. Yeah, I'm trying to understand. Or or like pricing. It depends pricing. on what you want. want. Do, you, do you want charting? Do, do you want actually analytics? Do you want fair value of a spread? 
Yeah. Okay. Sexy porn. All of that's in there. I mean, the basic option trading window is all the same. Everybody has the same window. So obviously, it's easy to use that. So why don't you use it for a month? Once I, you know what? The day that I launch it, I'll send it to you. You can have it for free for three months and trade. And Ooh, else I like that. So I can compare. All right, I sure. <laughs> and you know what? If it's not better, call me. Then I'll, I'll make it better. So, I pick all your time. I like this crowd because you guys are all in actually fintech, so I get like real questions. So let's look at your platform. Yeah, let's check it out. All right. Fire it up. All right, so I'm logged in. Am I trading? Oh, days don't no, wait. Days don't wait. Hold on. You gotta wait till the internet goes live again. Go back a sec. Looking for the internet, time, right? It's looking for for the internet all of a sudden. <laughs> Searching. Maybe I should do my phone. This is how your platform works? No, it's internet. It's like it keeps on searching for it, but it's not finding it. Let me just switch and go to another one and then see if I can turn Wi-Fi off and back on. If it doesn't work, I'll just do it on my phone, okay? I think it worked now. Yeah. See if it's working. Cool. All right, so, so, I'm, so, so I'm actually logged in already, okay? So let me open up the trading platform. Well, we you know we have a lot of bloggers, right? So now I can look at certain things, but I I, I like to open up my my social trading account because you have to log in twice. So right now it's going to log in. I don't know why it's taking long. Of course it does. Whenever you're doing something like this. So right now I have an account up. I this just is your bought, demo account, right? Yeah, this is my personal account that I just drew in there. Uh, I just bought, uh, my, bought actually, this stock actually yesterday was filled. I bought this stock. This stock is a small cap stock, and I bought it, and it got filled. Okay? Most of the other companies don't fill those stocks. Now, we don't, we, we don't have option trading yet, but I can, I can do actually multi-legs, you know, combos. There's equity trading, the basic order types, the stop limit, the market order. So for your options, can you uh, specify your spreads? So here I can specify spreads, I, I believe. So if I want a debit way. spread, what would I do? You know, I don't really know. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know what? It's blocked off now. It's not right. live yet, so it's blocked. Market's closed. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I can't do that right now. So look, it's, That's it's, cool. it's, it's just a typical trading screen, and then here, so look, if I go to news, so you still have to qualify cool. everybody that uses your. They all, they all, they all have to be qualified. So here's a, uh, uh, let's look at. So something. you do have some sort of regulatory aspect of it. Uh, CA, CA. I'm trying to find something that I want to put up, pull, pull up. That gives us like a. Stock you link into news on your stocks. Can you do like a? Oh yeah, sure. So look, thing? so look, I can do do, do see Apple. And it'll bring up the Apple window, right? I can look at Apple. And then here I can trade right from here. And it'll actually put in the Apple symbol. Oh, nice. So right from the, and then in most of the news that, so we do about five, five, 5,000 articles a day. Uh, that are basically automated news, and in the automated news articles. Can you click on the peaks and get the news? Is it Where is that? You can't click on the um, peaks and troughs of the uh, market the chart. and get the news? The chart. Yeah. I'm probably asking for too much. Now that, like, if you click on that, it doesn't. T it's not like no. a Bloomberg where it tells you no, like, no, no, what's no. going on that day. No, no. So we have actually news here from them, um, and then I mean, we we actually keep it light because we don't really because we cover like like small caps also. So you cover analysts, right? We actually that cover was that analysts. Green, blue. 
we actually do actually analyst the, the actual buys. You know, it's all strong, a promo you know, right here. It's Apple, so it's all like a strong buy. And then we have, you know, we actually have the actual Twitters that, that come in under Apple. Uh, but we we cover companies that you may uh, have never heard of. Like you, you know, we we'll cover IS uh, the uh, issuer direct is the company that a small cap company that I own a piece of. Uh, it's twelve it's twelve dollars and sixty cents. Um, you sure have it in the volume. All right, everyone. So uh, that was the demo so far, and um, thanks for uh, coming out. Retweet this, pass it over to your other fintech people. Thanks a lot.